So, hello. So, um, today we will explore some, uh, a certain kind of model, which is actually a very simple one, uh, which is about the dynamics of vegetation in semi-arid places. Well, you, you could ask yourself, well, why do you, why you just pick this, exactly this, this, uh, this kind of system? Well, one reason is it's simple and it uh, will display, uh, will give us an example of something which can be used, in, which is concept of alternative stable states and critical transitions, which can be used in many other settings. So I think this is one of the simplest uh, uh, cases where you can, you, you can discuss what the, at the end I will call um, a phenomenon that's in physics, it's called hysteresis. So I'm, I, today I will use the presentation, actually this is the same class that I used to, to teach in the previous, it was a summer school, which later originated this one. And uh, this is the same, uh, same class. So, okay, so let's, uh, we will talk about semi-arid and arid regions, some little model, and then discuss the model. Okay? So, let's talk about an idea. Uh, arid and semi-arid regions of the world are pretty much presence and uh, kind of everywhere, okay? So this is, is relevant for many, many uh, places in the world, yeah? So here in Brazil, for instance, you have the, in northeastern Brazil, semi-arid region also. And um, so we will consider Vegetation cover in regions where water is the main limiting uh, uh, resource. Okay. That, that's, that's correct for semi-arid places. You have vegetation, but water is a limiting factor. Okay. So this would be very different from uh, other regions like uh, tropical forest, for instance. A tropical forest has a lot of water. So water is not limiting, but in semi-arid regions, yeah, the water is limiting. So, and we want to have a simple mathematical model which will describe how vegetation cover depends on rainfall. Okay? So the ba basic thing is vegetation, we will describe vegetation cover by biomass, it's not individuals, it's, uh, it's, the, uh, it's not a species, it's biomass in the region, it can be several species. So biomass, and we will have to have another variable for water in the soil, okay? amount of water in the soil. So we have an abiotic resource, and we will have two variables, one, the biomass, the other one, the amount of water in the soil. We will do this in a very simple way because um, more improved models and so on will take into account, for instance, that not all water which is in the soil is available for the vegetation. There are lots of things that, that uh, can, can improve models, but we will stay with the simple idea that if you have rainfall, you will have a certain amount of water that is available for the vegetation. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's, it, it, this looks like a predator-prey thing, yes, because it's kind of, uh, the plants are kind of preying you know, the, the water, but it's, I mean, this is just uh, a little bit uh, figurative. So, uh, obviously, um, vegetation consumes water, but water does not originate from water. 
in, 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 in this case, uh, if you want the total hydrological cycle, then, you, then water comes from water. But we are not taking into account that this scale of circulations, okay? We just have a system, say, there's, there's rainfall, okay? And the rainfall is a given value, which will represent, some, let's say, the monthly average, for instance, or accumulated uh, waterfall over a certain period of time. Okay? So let's call, let me put this a little bit better on. Uh, so this will be a, a function of time, which is water in soil. And then you will have some u of t, which is will be biomass over. So let's let's discuss on the on the on the blackboard this equation. The first thing is we will have to write something like this. So the water equation that should be precipitation yeah. in semi arid regions precipitation is rainfall well, and precipitation could be other things also but it's more for very cold places for instance it could be snow in this case it's only rainfall and i will say that's a certain value a certain constant okay so then you would say obviously it's not not true that the rainfall is constant but you, you will look and uh, you will look, look, we will take A as a constant representing, for instance, uh, averages of rainfall over a certain time. Well, then water should evaporate. And there's a certain constant of, of evaporation. Okay? So it's like a mortality term for water. Okay, so typically abiotic resources as we have seen, you have a constant influx, like we have seen when we discuss consumer resource with abiotic resources. This one, and then there comes this this curious term. This term is <coughs> given by a cubic term, u square w. Where does it come from? From the lab. So people go, it is not so difficult to establish the relation between a biomass that uh, in a certain region and how much water you, you under controlled situation, you, you have a, you decide how much water you will put into, into a, uh, uh, for, for the vegetation and observe what's the biomass, which is maintained by a certain amount of water. You can do this with several experiments. People from, uh, um, from hydrology and from uh, uh, science of uh, soil and so on, that's their business. Okay? So this is empirical, okay? Comes from the lab. Okay? And the important thing is you see, when we had predator prey dynamics, um, we had, we would have u times w. But, but here, it's u squared. And this will make a very big difference. Now, for the biomass, what would you have? Biomass can, should emerge from, from the, the from this term. This is the consumption of water by biomass. Okay? So this somehow should be uh, something like this. First, there's a natural death rate, D times U. And then biomass it will increase with some new parameter, U squared W. Okay? Where C and E are different again because it's it's a, it's a conversion of one 
of water into biomass, and then there is an inefficiency, and there is a conversion factor. Okay? So that's the model. Very simple. The only thing that we have is, is rainfall, biomass consumes water, and generates new biomass. That's, that's it. Okay? And the different thing that happens here is that we have this cubic term, u square w. That is would be an important mathematical difference from the models that we have seen before. Now, how many parameters do I have here? I have A, B, C, D, E. Five parameters. If I want to explore the dynamics of this system, when how the dynamics of the system depends on the parameters, I would have a parameter space of dimension five. Okay. Oh, not so nice. Maybe it turns out that that, uh, for instance, we, we had already large parameter spaces in the other uh, discussions, but it was always a kind of fixed point uh, and, uh, and, and it didn't matter. The, the parameters changed the value of the fixed point, but not the nature of the fixed point, except for what was in And uh, And so, so there's a magic here. I have five parameters, but I have two functions, w and u, and the, the time, which I can rescale. Rescale is multiply by a constant. Okay? And if I multiply by a constant, I can choose the constant such that some of these parameters become one. Okay? So that's a, that's a trick. Okay? So let's do this. I think I have written the result here already. Okay. So uh, let's do it step by step. I will now have the capital uh, variables. And I write this, that this one is just the old one times something which has this aspect. So first of all, the time is t times b. b was a kind of mortality rate. The dimension of b is 1 over time. We have discussed this many times. Therefore, t times b is a non-dimensional time, has no dimension. Yeah. Just are there braces supposed to look at the function? No. I mean, this? No. Uh, <laughs> It's it, it just just by. Um, uh, it's, uh, I thought maybe it was static. <laughs> okay. Now, if you want to know, I, I give you these. I can plug this in here. Okay? So, first, d d t. Which will be what d d tau t capital, uh, which is. Uh, B. B, D, H. Okay. okay. So the first equation will start with B times all this mass here times E <coughs> divided by square root of B to the third times C. G, D. Agree? Good. Minus it will be A minus B, W. Oops, B times W. It's the same thing. E over square root of B to the truth. See? 
minus c u squared, which is will be uh, okay, c times will be b times c, if I c squared here. Uh, again, there's something here, um, which is e over, oh, anyway, I said u squared w. Now, what is nice here is that I can cancel this here. I can divide everything by b. Okay? If I divide everything by b, and by this, this, by this factor here, this one gets equal to 1. Okay? This factor is exactly the same factor here. Okay? And this is uh, excellent for us, because then when you do this, you will have dw dt. Then you get a divided by b multiplied by 1 over this, which will be square root of b to the third c divided by e minus w minus then th we have b times this, this guy and let me see what what happened here ah I, I yeah that's correct but I need this other one um, there is a c that should not be there um, I probably made something wrong here. Um, U is B times C. That's probably what this. Okay, that the C doesn't exist. Here. It's B over C. So sorry, there's a typo. It's B over C. Okay, then then it, the C here had cancelled. Therefore, you had get a one here. So, this is an example. I, I won't do the for the second uh, equation, but this is an example of what? Now, I have an, an equation which has only one parameter, which is this bunch of things. Okay? All this bunch of things is just one parameter, which we'll call A, capital A. It's a constant. Okay? And it's an indirect measure of the rainfall. What? Uh, no, I, uh, ah, I, I have managed, okay. Okay, I, I, I substitute it in the wrong way, okay. But, okay, so I, I want to do this calculation again, but if you substitute one into the other, okay? Yeah, I, I really, I, I messed up this. Uh, I, it should be capital here and, and uh, okay, sorry. I messed up the calculation. But the principle is simple. You plug into the equation your, your new parameters, okay? and you choose. Let's go back to this one. You choose uh, these guys here, these constants here, in, in such a way that my equation at the end has a lot of, of, of parameters that became just one, okay? Like this. Here, these are the equations that you will obtain if you substitute that rescaling, okay? What's nice about this? There are only two constants here, A and B. And A is a measure, clearly is a measure of, of the waterfall, of the rainfall, because it's proportional to A. And B is a kind of ratio of, of what used to be the both um, this term and this term. Okay? Used to be the mortalities. Okay? 
So with this, now we have equations that depend only on two parameters, which is nice, and much better than five. So that's a trick that you can do every time you have a lots of parameters, and you can, you can use the rescaling of variables to simplify the model. And then you learn also that the general characteristics of the, of the, of the equation, the qualitative analysis that we have been performing for others, many other uh, equations, that the qualitative analysis depends only on th these combinations of parameters and not on, on therefore you reduce your parameter space from five to two. And now it's much easier to explore. Okay? So this is the idea of uh, non, uh, rescaling of parameters. Okay? So now you go for the fixed points. Okay? Again, you do the same thing as I have done many times. And you go for the fixed points here. Therefore, you impose that the time derivatives are zero. And therefore, the uh, right-hand sides of these equations, which involve waterfall and PIO mass, has to be zero. Okay? So now you have to solve this algebraic equations for W and U. So, uh, an obvious solution here is that U, U is equal to, um, to zero and W equal to A. Okay. This is the case here. If U is equal to zero, this is satisfied. And if it's equal to zero, then W should be equal to A, which means this is a description of a zero biomass state where you have rainfall, but no biomass. Okay? So it's the zero biomass. It's desert. No biomass at all. Okay? So, but then there are others which have different uh, uh, values. You can calculate this. You, this is will, it's just the solution of something which is, will be a quadratic equation. Okay? So you calculate the other fixed points, and what you, t you discover is that if A is bigger than two times B, then you have two other fixed points. Okay? So if A, the rainfall, is smaller than two times B, the only solution is zero biomass. And if A is bigger than two times B, meaning I have enough rainfall in this, in this respect, in the, in, in this measurement, uh, non-dimensional measurement, if I have enough rainfall, I can have two other solutions, okay? Then, well, you would obviously ask, will the, these two solutions be stable or not, okay? So, this goes through stability analysis, which uh, we have not explicitly studied here, but I guess you already remember, it is, if I perturb the uh, fixed point, then I, I want to see if the, if the perturbed solution goes back to the fixed point or goes away. Okay? So you can do this for these equations. And uh, here. So, uh, okay. Uh, ah, this is, okay, let's see, just what I told you. So we will assume that A is, is now bigger than two times B, because otherwise there's no fun, okay? There's, there's, there's just a desert. So linear stability analysis will tell you that this fixed point here is always stable. A, de a desert is always stable, fixed point. Okay? At this 
says that once you get to zero biomass, you do not recover by small perturbations. Okay. That's what we see with desert. Desert don't, don't flourish because it starts to rain a little bit more. Okay. It, 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 stay, it stays there. Okay. If you want to, to make a desert to become green again, it is not a small perturbation. You have to really do something very, uh, uh, let's say, a, a, a very strong perturbation. You have to e use irrigation, and then you have to bring in special crops and a lot of things in order to, to reverse. And that's usually very, very, very uh, expensive. Yeah. So, anyhow, so desert solution desert is fixed point. It's a fixed point that is stable. That's bad news. Right? So now this other fixed point here, which I had written before, is always unstable, and there is. One fixed point that is stable provided B is smaller than 2. Okay. Remember what B was? Okay. B, B was the, was the, the ratio of the death rate death rate of the vegetation uh, cover to the evaporation. Saying this is small means that the um, death rate of the vegetation cannot, should, should not be too, much, too high. If the death rate of the, of the vegetation is too high, then this fixed point is unstable. You get only fixed point is the zero, which is desert. Okay? So we will assume in that this inequality, this B, uh, B smaller than two is, is verified. Okay? So if I have this, okay, if I have B smaller than two, then I can have two stable fixed points. Okay. Now let's let's put it on a now. What I think maybe Renato already talked about bifurcation diagrams. Yes. Or not? Have you heard about bifurcation? Yeah. Okay. Let's look for a very simple one. Okay. So, uh, what I want is the following. Here I want to put A, which is proportional to the amount of rainfall. Okay. And I want to plot the values of fixed points as they depend on A. And I will assume that B is smaller than 2 in order to have at least two fixed points. Now, what I told you is there is one fixed point that is always stable for any value of A, which is zero vegetation cover. Then this is one fixed point. Okay. Then we had two other fixed points if uh, a was um, if A was bigger than two times B. Okay, so if you put this value here, two times B. Here in this region, you have only one fixed point. But now, if A is bigger than two times B, there is another fixed point here. Okay, which is the one that I had uh, shown before. Which disappeared. 
which is this one. Okay? So this is easy. You, you use your favorite plotting uh, uh, software, and this is a function of A. Okay? Okay? So I, I should have written here that I, I'm plotting biomass, obviously, not the water. And uh, you can plot this, this, this thing. Right? You go on and plot. And you will obtain something which is not here exactly. Something like this. So then there is another fixed point which is unstable. Therefore, we will not plot this fixed point. Now, in this region here, from here, I have two fixed points. Okay? So what will the what will be which which fixed point will be the one that you that you will get if, if, if I start with a certain system with a certain amount of biomass and a certain amount of of vegetation will I go to a desert or to a sustained vegetation cover that's the question and this depends on the initial condition right? so this table this region is a region of bistability So, because there are two fixed points. Okay? Now, let us say that I, I have a certain value A here. A, let's put a, a little bit of A0 here. Okay? Let's say I have a certain amount of waterfall, um, of rainfall, and I am happy with my vegetation cover, forest, everything it goes very good for me. Let's say that you have this. But now, on a long time scale, maybe A will change. And say that it changes in this direction. As A becomes smaller, the vegetation cover gets also smaller. But if you cross this critical value 2 times b, the only fixed point is this one. And here you add a small uh, you have a, a vegetation cover. And once you cross this, you, poof, you go down to zero. It's not continuous. It's not continuous. It, if it started here, that would be different. That would not be a critical transition. So this is called a critical transition. Okay? So uh, this, let's say then that maybe the waterfall, the, the rainfall increases again and gets here. I don't get back here because this one is stable. So if I start at A0, go here, and come back, I don't get back for where I started. Okay? Well, if, if I do this cycle, I start with A0 at a certain moment of time, okay? then I would have, as A decreases, I would have a vegetation cover that is decreasing, that collapses when you cross the critical point, and then when you start again, you will stay here forever. So that's, that's the essence of what is desertification. It's not a reversible thing. Okay. Um, like. um, how do you know there is this uh, non-continuous point? Because mm -hmm. I understand the bistability, but I don't understand why you argue that on 2B this value is not continuous. Well, because this, this here 
is just the plot of this function here. Okay? I, I choose a certain value of b. Okay, b equal to 1. And anything goes because b is has to be smaller than 2. Okay, I put b equal to 1, and I just plot this here. Okay? And this here, obviously, a has to be uh, uh, bigger than 2 times b, otherwise you get an imaginary lambda. And uh, well, it turns out that the plot is like this. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. It's just just that. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not uh, no magic. No magic. Okay. So and this is the point which is very important, right? Because you could have something like this with a with a bifurcation point. This is called a bifurcation point. A bifurcation like this, then you could have different things. Okay, then you would have things like uh, reversible transitions and so on. But in this case, no. Now we have now we have a situation where if I am in the situation of that I have a biomass uh, cover uh, coverage, and I cross a critical point, I go to zero, and the zero is stable, and therefore. You cannot recover by small perturbations. Okay? What, what turns out to be also true is that big perturbation here, say you are here. You are a desert, but in a desert situation, but you have rainfall. Okay? You just don't have biomass. So if you could just perturb this system and introduce artificially biomass in such an extent that you you get out of that the basin of attraction of this point and you get to the, this one, then you can go back to vegetation cover. Okay? Well, then you'd say, well, is there any example of this? Well, there's something that we have not taken into account here, which is when you go through a uh, transition like this, which is over centuries usually, okay? Uh, then the soil the, the structure of the soil also changes, which could be, for instance, if you go for old deserts like, like, like the Sahara, and there are many regions where, I mean, you, you, the structure it, it, of the soil has changed at to a point that will make it impo impossible to recover. But this is not in this model. Okay? In this model, we have just the soil with, it, which, which, uh, with some water. Okay, so you would have to take into account more hydrological facts and so on in this case. But you have uh, examples of, of regions where people have, have plantations, have, like in Israel, of certain trees in what used to be a desert. Okay? But obviously this is, this is something which is uh, uh, only possible on a small scale, right? you don't want. and its sustainability depends on on artificially increasing the, the the amount of water through irrigation and so on and so on. And uh, while it's possible, obviously, but it's it's obviously very expensive if you think about agricultural things related to this water and anything, water is expensive, okay? If it's not, if it's what, not, not the rainfall, water is expensive for anything that you want to do when you have uh, agriculture. So, this is a sample of this kind of transitions. Here is the uh, small plot. And uh, then you can uh, think uh, what I just uh, told you. I start at a certain point. I will go to a value which is um, uh, I, um, I have a vegetation cover. I have a transition. I go to zero and I stay at zero. After that, and when I go back, this is uh, something which has the name of um, uh, I think it's better hysteresis than hysteresis actually. So hysteresis. Um, uh, which is something that it's a something that exists also in in physics, and physics is usually connected to magnetism. Okay, but never mind. 
So deserts are stable, and this is the, all the drama of the deserts. Okay? Here's a, an example, which is a very famous one, which is estimated vegetation cover of the region, of a certain region of the Sahara Desert. It's more like the side of Egypt, actually, this, this spot. And they evaluate the estimated vegetation cover by digging and, uh, and, uh, and looking the age of pollen and quantity of pollen. Okay? So uh, you can establish not the total amount of vegetation, but you have a proxy of the vegetation cover over very long time, like like nine nine years ago, nine thousand years ago, and with this kind of analysis, you have this kind of thing. You have a region where you have a transition, and then you go not to zero, but uh, to some, a very small amount. Okay, so this is 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 an example of this kind of critical transition, but obviously. Uh, the, the model is very simple and one point which could be a real uh, a, a weak point is that this model only has a, a complete desert with zero vegetation but you know in many places Deserts are not only like the pictures you get in the movies. Deserts have plen have vegetations, okay, and uh, and um, so there is a small amount of vegetation, not big amount, okay, but it's not zero. And uh, also, this region here is no matter how much uh, of of a, a rainfall I have, I never get back to this fixed point. But you could have something better, which I won't describe mathematically, but instead of having this kind of that's a bifurcation diagram, yeah, you should have something like this. Uh, uh, region, you have the zero, which is, is stable, up to a certain point. And then you have a region of bistability and and then on the right, you would have only one fixed point, which is the one with the, with the, with the, um, uh, with vegetation cover. So in this case, you can have two transitions. You have the transition, and you cross one bifurcation point from vegetation cover to zero biomass. And then you could also have a transition from zero biomass back to vegetation cover, depending on the amount of rainfall. So this is a, would be a better model. Okay? And actually, then there are models like this, that, uh, and this does uh, represent also a bistable bi situation, but it's a non-zero uh, uh, desert. I mean, non-zero biomass, but small biomass instead of zero biomass. So th then you would have expected something like that. Okay? So, this, in, in the context of, uh, of uh, ecology, uh, this region here uh, represents what is called the existence of alternative stable states. Um, and, and, well, then you have this, this question that has been debated recently pretty much, which is the what well, this is what also people call a, a turning point, okay? And, and this has been pretty much discussed in, uh, in climate science and, and um, connected to climate change. So now we don't want just to think about deserts and vegetation. But we can think that this kind of alternative stable states with transitions between regions where you have bi-stable situation and regions where you don't. Okay? This can happen in many other instances. 
also. Okay? So this kind of idea of having uh, um, transitions and, 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 and turning points and so on is usually also transplanted to other areas. For instance, give me an example where you could think about this. When, when do you think you have a transition from, from one situation, let's say could be the desired situation, and, and then you have a transition to another situation which is also stable? Biological invasions, uh, no, but, but biological inv invasions means the introduction of new species. And uh, here what we have is this always the same system. It's always the same system. Well, seasonal changes. No, no, seasonal changes are, uh, are not uh, the of this kind. They are not critical transitions. You have a certain situation which is stable, which get destabilized somehow by changes in, the, in some parameter, and then you get to another situation that's also stable. Yeah. More ideas. No idea at all? Did electrical? No hydroelectric power station. No, no. I mean that then you don't have any transition from one fixed point to the other. More ideas. So there's one which is a cartoon transition, which is just a boat. And uh, the boat usually stays there with the water. Pop, 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 pop. And somehow, if you capsize it, it's also stable. Okay? If you turn it up, turn it. Okay? So a boat, but it's more cartoonish. Okay? But a boat can also have this. Yeah? It's, it's when you have the normal boat, and you have some waves, and it more or less will stay in the normal situation. But if you threw some something to a to a to a <coughs> to a, a, a forcing, a special forcing, and so on, you capsize the boat. Then, with the same outside waves and so on, it will stay capsized. Right? So both of them are stable situations okay? under the same circumstances. Okay? That's by stability. One other well-known transition is lake eutrophication. So what is this? You have, you have normally you, have, you will have a lake where you have also some, some vegetation in the lake. And, and then there is this thing that when you pollute the lake from day to night, you can have a transition and you're, you have your 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 uh, lake like completely green or brown and so on and then uh, you you cannot reverse this usually okay? and even even if you stop the pollution if you stop the pollution you don't reverse that's that's also a critical transition and well pollution in this case is is nutrients for the vegetation right and then you don't have this translucent uh, trans uh, lake anymore, and then you get into a, on a, on, onto a feedback loop that maintains this situation which, uh, with uh, too, too many uh, uh, plants and uh, water, greenish water, even if you stop by stop polluting. Okay? In order to get back, you'd have to do something very radical and go there and, and, uh, and, 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 and cut down the vegetation, something which usually it's, it's, it's 
if, if it's a lake of certain proportions, it's, in, it's impossible. Well, it's impossible. It's very, very expensive to do this. So that is also uh, um, a transition, which is the transition of, of lake eutrophication. Actually, I have another example. Yeah. So this is this is, has been very much discussed in the um, recent times, which is is global change reversible or not? Or are there this kind of transitions? Okay. So there are many. Well, the point is well. How do you? How are models in climate change? Do you, do you know how how are the models? Right. So models for climate change are models that have to model the interaction of the atmosphere with land and with sea, and all. And then you have the global circulation patterns, and then you have to take into account all particularities, which is, for instance. On on, I know, on 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 Greenland, for instance, that it's always covered with 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 uh, with snow and ice. You have an albedo effect where it's very strong; everything reflects, okay? and uh, which is different from from say tropical forest, which is which is green. It's something completely different. And then you have to map all all of the Earth. And, and look at what are the, 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 mainly the albedo effect of each kind of vegetation or lack of vegetation. Then you have to look for where does it come from, that the, the pollution, that the, where does it come from, how much um, uh, vegetation cover you can have at each point. So this is really big models. I mean, this is things that you don't do if you don't have a group of, uh, of hundreds of researchers working all their lives on these models. That's an incredible. Right? That people will they, they build a model. A model is something which is an enormous amount of, uh, of equations. And if you do, for instance, you want to work you, your PhD on, on this kind of thing, you will be in a group. You will learn how to use these models. And then you can do the changes to simulate uh, some hypotheses and so on. It's very, very computational. So it is difficult to, to be precise ab about the existence of tipping points for climate. Why? Why? It's such a number of parameters, such a number of equations that could be difficult to, to manage. One argument has been that, for instance, with respect to Amazonian regions, you take one of these models. Okay. And there are like six or seven in the world. Okay. These are big groups. And you take one of these models and you do a simple simulation. Chop down all the Amazonian forest on your model, obviously. Okay. Will it regenerate or not according to your model? And it doesn't. But almost there can always be problems because are all the effects being considered or not? So if this is, let's say, it's, it's a kind of weak argument. Okay? You just simulate a zero vegetation and you look if it's stable or not. That is one thing. In, in respect to the Amazonian region, the, the transformation of, of of the uh, people talk about transforming the Amazonian forest into some people say a desert. It's not a desert actually. It's it's uh, oh, sorry, it's Cerrado, um, savanna. It's kind of savanna and so on. And well, this has to do with the general circulation of water in the region because. In order to have this kind of transition, you usually need feedbacks, positive or negative feedbacks. 
And in this case, and in the Amazonian region, you have a certain amount of water rainfall, which is evaporation from the forest, and not global circulation. Okay? There is global circulation. There's a, there's a kind of of a stream uh, coming in over the over the Atlantic and going into Brazil, like like in Pará, Amapá, it goes this way, then it bounces back at the Andes and goes down to southeastern Brazil. But there is also, in the Amazonian region, this cycle which is auto-sustained, self-sustained thing. And then, if you, there could be, if you chop too much the trees, that this cycle becomes unstable. And if this cycle becomes unstable, you don't have it, uh, this rainfall anymore. You will only have some rainfall coming from the general circulation. But it's not enough to sustain a forest. It will sustain a savanna. So this is the argument regarding tipping points for the Amazonian region. Then there's another uh, general discussion about this. Uh, is are there global tip tipping points in climate science? So there are arguments like there are some systems in the world, some regions in the world, some which are kind of main motors of climate. So for instance, Amazonian regions are one. But uh, one which is also very important is the permafrost in, in, in Siberia because permafrost has a lot of, of, of um, uh, green, uh, greenhouse gases uh, in it. If you just release this, you, you have a big problem. And then there are others. So uh, for instance, you could say um, maybe there are kind of, of, are there interconnection between them? So probably yes. And if now I have, uh, uh, like say, a uh, certain amount of, of Antarctica going away <laughs> due to increase of temperature, will this generate a series of transitions at the global level? That's a question that's open to discussion, actually. Okay? So th this is not so easy to, to, to simulate with this kind of models and so on. But this is also a, a point which is very important. Okay? Now, let's go back to our system here and say you are managing the system, okay? Because, well, he, obviously you are not managing a whole forest or so on, you cannot manage the climate and so on, but you could have, ah, oh, let me, uh, I, I now recall, I have actually worked with, with Renato and Paolo on one system that has a critical transition, which is a, a, a problem in hydrology this is actually was very important when we had the, the crisis of, of, uh, um, um, of the system here called Cantareira, the, the one that, that uh, brings water into, the, into Sao Paulo, which catches water in, 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 in a basin called the uh, Piracicaba Basin and so on. And what happened is, uh, at a certain point, the, uh, we had a crisis, I mean, you have uh, uh, a diminished rainfall for a sustained period. And actually what happened is you, you have a usual, usually rainfall here in this region. It's, it's the, the wet season starts in October and ends in March, March, April. Right? Then you, and, and when you have a decrease of rainfall, exactly in the wet region, then you can have a problem because in the, in the dry region, the rainfall is, 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 is usually also, uh, is, is, is small, but in the wet region, in, wet, uh, in the wet, wet season, if it doesn't rain and you go very close without rain to the, to the um, uh, dry season, then you will have a whole year without the rainfall. And this is a problem if you are catching water for distribution in a city. But what we showed actually is what well, we wrote a simple model, like simple models and so on, but it was stochastic and so on. 
But <coughs> what happened is actually such a system can have a tipping point, which is that when you go on a, to a certain region of, uh, if, if, if your rainfall falls below a certain value, then you get a very low level of water flowing into the reservoirs. And if you increase the rainfall, it doesn't respond. So when rain comes back, it doesn't respond in time. Okay. Why? Because there's too much soil, which is where you used to have water. Now you have a, have a reduced amount of water. You have more soil exposed. And when the rain comes, it first will have to, to infiltrate all the soil and so on and so on and so on. And only after a certain longer time, you get back to the normal regime, which should be the same kind of thing that you have here. You, you went to a bad situation, let's say, here. But when after a sufficient amount of rainfall has fallen, then you get back. And that's what actually seems to me. I mean, well, our, our work tries to show that this kind of situation has happened here. And this, with the, with the, uh, with the water reservoirs, which means that management of water reservoirs if, if you are in situations that could be like this, has to be much more careful. It's not just that the water, the, the water amount in a reservoir is proportional to the rainfall of the last month. It's not. Okay? It, it does depend on more, more, thing, more complicated hydrological uh, factors in the system, and it can have this kind of transition which are very dangerous. Actually, this is empirically known by many of the managers. For instance, where, where you have this kind of situation where you have really um, uh, uh, rainfall is, 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 you can have very, very dry seasons. And for instance, in California and in Australia, and then they have the water management, they, they have um, pretty interesting thing. They have much more connection between reservoirs. And that's actually what we do here in Brazil with a hydroelectric uh, power station. Hydroelectric uh, is also based on rainfall. And, and if you don't ha have rainfall, you could have just your, your, your energy production stops at a certain point. But there's something which is called Operador uh, Integrado Nacional, which is nationally in integrated management so that you don't need the, the power station that is outside here to give you necessarily the, the, the energy you have. If this collapse because of, um, of a lack of rainfall, you can bring it from other places. And this is what gives stability to the system. Right? This is the, why you have uh, uh, your, your electric power is still there even if it, you have a, 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 a season where you expect it to have rainfall and you don't because you have the integration. And that's actually what was not possible here in the city of Sao Paulo because integrating, you have several water reservoirs, but they are not integrated. So the Cantarera served the northern part of the city and it was not viable on a time scale of a year to build a system that would bring water from elsewhere. This was not possible. Right? And so this is an example. But now, now let's see. What would be very interesting for us is if we say you are in a situation, you are on the fixed point here, which is the one that you like, vegetation cover in this case. Is there a way of knowing, is there, is there a way to know if you are close to a tipping point or not? Okay. This would be very practical. Right? 
to know if you are close to a tipping point. So what you ideally would like is to have um, uh, early warning signals of critical transitions. And this has been studied a lot. And so for vegetation cover, there is one aspect that can be um, uh, that can, can be an early warning signal, which should be like this. If you are here with full vegetation cover, the spatial distribution is just a lot of biomass here, a lot of plants. As you go down this, this uh, situation where the rainfall gets smaller and smaller, first, you get a pattern of stride. It's not homogeneous. The, the, the pattern of vegetation is not spatially homogeneous. And then you get here, closer to closer, then you get balls. So if you have, so you can do this with aerial photos. And uh, for instance, people have done this in the area south to Sahara, which is the Sahel, which is a region where we have very strong desertification process. And then you can see this kind of thing. So this is an early warning signal. Yeah. But then much, much, uh, much discussion has, has been uh, 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 heated discussions about can we do something which uh, this, is, this is OK for biomass dynamics, because you can have a spatial thing. But now may, maybe you don't. You are not interested in this kind of situation. You are interested in kind of situation which is something else, eutrophication of the lake, or, or, or whatever system that has, can have two fixed points. And then you'd like to know, is there a systematic way of studying uh, the transitions in uh, using, for instance, some statistical uh, analysis? Th this, would, this has been pretty much discussed. And the one thing is, if you have a system which, which has some fluctuations and so on, and it comes close to, to a tipping point. When you get at the tipping point, there is obviously a certain time for transition okay, from one fixed point to the other one. And this goes pretty much on a scale which is much uh, of, um, of, uh, of time much shorter than the normal scales. So I have, you have a quick transition, and in a quick transition, if you take the time series of your variable you are interested, then it is super, the autocorrelation function step one is, has a peak because it's, it's, it's super correlated. So autocorrelation function of the shortest possible uh, time unit, uh, having a peak could show that you have critical transitions. The point is, it's not early enough as a signal because you have already set in. In, the, in order to have this peak, now usually what you will have is it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the autocorrelation function which starts to increase, but already started the transition. It's not early enough. So looking at this kind of things like, um, like statistical measures of the fluctuations around a certain state, uh, it's better to characterize a transition than to say if you are close or not to the transition. So this is the point that has been, I mean, people have promoted a lot of the idea of early warning signals. If you go, you will easily find uh, on, on, um, on the web uh, whole uh, software packages for analysis of this in whatever language, uh, Python, R, and so on. But there is this kind of thing that if we are interested in predicting if you are close to a transition, it's difficult. By the nature of the transition, it's, it sets in and then very quickly transitions. And then you cannot stop it usually. So these are the things that uh, are uh, most, uh, mostly discussed with relation to alternative uh, stable states. 
In ecology, there are many things that have uh, people, in many, many situations discuss uh, at uh, regional scales processes that could uh, give rise to, to alternative uh, stable states. So, um, okay, I think I'm about, uh, we are a little bit early, but uh, if you have any questions otherwise, I think this is, uh, we are done with this. And uh, next, uh, next class, is just after coffee, it's for discussions and questions. But if you have some questions now about this the subject, it's, it's a good time, so. Uh, I was interested in what you said about it, eutrophic lakes. Hmm? Eut eutrophize it? Is that how it's say in English? I don't know. Eutrofication. Hmm? De... Eu, eu não ouço direito às vezes. Eu falo, <laughs> <laughs> fala alto comigo. Eutrofication de lagos? Ah, eutrofication. I was interested in that. Uh, what would you say is the tipping point for eutrophication? Would that be nutrient intake, cyanobacteria number? What? Well. Usually the, the simplest models, are, I, I'm not a specialist on, on, on lake eutrophication, but usually it's, it's the amount of, 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 uh, of nutrients that drives the thing. I see, but if you take the pollution out, then you no longer have the nutrient, nutrient intake. So how does that not revert back? That was because the, pro the production of, of, of I, I don't know exactly the biology of this, the fact that you have a lot of plants, they also produce a lot of, of, of dead plants and then will kind of cycle inside of the, the, the lake. And I, maybe there's something else also, but you, um, I don't know about the cyanobacteria, for instance. But, but usually what you have is you, if you have a amount of, in, of, uh, of nitrogen or nutrients, which is too, uh, too, too uh, too high, then you get the eutrophication and say, oh, let's stop with this. But the, the system is in a stable state. More questions? Roberto, uh, some, ki some kinds of cancer can have a bistable. Uh, so I, I, I'm thinking about not the metastatic cancer, but I well, I, I really don't know because I don't. Uh, I've never studied this kind of thing. Uh, but maybe yes. I've, uh, but I, I'm, I'm. The idea is, if you have, uh, if you have sit situations when the with the same external conditions, you can have one or other uh, fixed point. Okay, so uh, this is the, the situation. For instance, with the, the lake eutrophication story, or this here, you, with, with the same amount of of rainfall, you can have either a forest or a desert. Okay, so I don't know about cancer. I really, really, it's out of what I. Yeah, uh, the, the environment is kind of the same, mm -hmm. but the, there is something that changes inside the cell that makes it grow to yeah. another uh -huh. stage, another tissue level. Yeah, but then you have changed your system actually because the, 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 the doubling time of your bacteria, of your cells and so on, it, it's not so much a st alternative stable state, it's, it, it's that your system changed. By some genetic problem. Um, I'm curious about this this graph interpretation this because, one? as you just said. Um, in some cases, with the same amount of rain, you can have a desert or a, a forest. Mm -hmm. But then it talks about a reversed 
transition from desert to a uh, higher vegetation coverage, yeah. I guess. Yeah, this is... And mm -hmm. that wouldn't depend only on rain because you have, you have to have like a, a seed bank on yeah. the soil to... Yeah, so sure, this is uh, it's, it's, it's also still a toy model, okay? But well, exactly, what you have here, it's uh, that uh, one part is just what we had before which is the transition that goes from, uh, from the bistable region to the, to the left here. And then here, it, there is the possibility of a reverse. But obviously, this is connected. You have to have the rainfall. Obviously, in, in nature, you will have other hydrological facts that are important. And, uh, and when I say it's, it's, it's a reversal, it's that and the introduction of small amount of vegetation will, will increase. Here, if I introduce a small, say you are in the bistable region. If I introduce a small amount of vegetation, you don't get back to the, here because you, have, you are connected to the zero. If the zero is not any more stable here, then the amount of vegetation small will actually have a process, a, back, a feedback process, that will take you back to the vegetation over that you want. Okay? So that's, that's the idea. But uh, I think in practice for the desert, um, the structure of the soil changes so much that you, you can't have the, feed, the, the reverse transition. But in other systems, you can. I mean, this is meant to be an example of a system which has bistable regions. In other systems, they can. Okay? But the, the, the desertification is, is the problem that this is a very long time scale for the, for the transition and the time scale for having uh, um, structural uh, um, uh, uh, differences in soil is much shorter. And uh, this creates this uh, situation that you get, it's Im almost impossible to recover. More question about this? Where is the mic? Um, I'm not sure, but I think you mentioned that the lake eutrophication can be solved. Um, what do you mean by that? Because I know that um, lake eutrophication can be solved, like it's possible to, to do it. So. What I mean is the following, I'm, I'm in, in, I mean, everything has a solution. <laughs> yeah, so you say you have the electrification. Now, now, I mean, you can, when, when it's a stable fixed point, and, and there, say, say this is down now, your electrification rate is zero here, Let's say water transparency, <laughs> okay? And this is the one that you would like to live in the, in, with the, with a, uh, on, on this fixed point, okay? But this is stable here. What it means stable is, if you do a small perturbation, you will get back to this, okay? So the stable fixed point. But what if you do a, a big uh, perturbation? Then maybe you, are, you can artificially take your system out of the zero by a big modification and then can go back to the to the desired uh, fixed point, right? That's the kind of thing that you could imagine Then you would have to have, in this, this on the practical side, depends on the time of, of size and, uh, and, uh, and how deep the, the lake is, if this is possible or not to do, okay? From, from the, from the uh, point of view of, um, I mean, practically, uh, I mean, how much money on the, how would you do this in, 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 any, in particular cases. But when I say that re reversal is in this kind of system, is possible through perturbing the system, but very, very big perturbations that take you back to the situation that you wanted. And uh, the feasibility of this will be dependent on, uh, on each case. Sometimes that might, maybe, or sometimes not. OK. OK, 
okay, let's go for coffee and then we have discussions next class. <laughs>